In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, who loved us even when we were dead in sin, made us alive together with Christ by grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with his power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Come, you faithful, raise a strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought his Israel into joy from sadness. Loosed from Pharaoh's bitter yoke, Jacob's sons and daughters led them with a moistened foot through the Red Sea waters. Tis the spring of souls today, Christ has burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death, as a sun has risen, all the winter of our sins, long and dark, is flying. From his light to whom is given, Lord, and praise undying. Now the queen of seasons bright with the day of splendor, with the royal feasts of feasts, comes its joy to render, come to gladden faithful hearts which with true affection welcome in unwearied strain Jesus' resurrection. For today among his own Christ appeared bestowing his deep peace which evermore passes human knowing neither could the gates of death nor the tomb's dark portal nor the watcher nor the seal hold him as a mortal alleluia now we cry to our king immortal who triumphant burst the bars of the tomb's dark portal. Come, you faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought his Israel into joy from sadness. Let us pray. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. 
Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. All who believed were together and held all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in praying the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 Peter, the second chapter. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth, when he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter by the sheepfold, by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish of thy strain, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulders gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil, I fear no ill. With thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thy unction grace bestoweth, and oh, what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so, through all the length of days, thy goodness fail forever. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Isn't that our prayer, St. Mark's? That once again, by God's grace, the Holy Spirit would call us by the gospel as he does, enlighten us with his gifts, gather us once again to be a part of his people in this place, in this house. Of course, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, our bodies, where he dwells. This is our house. May our house always be a fitting habitation for him. The Church of Christ is that temple built of living stones 
on the foundation of the apostles and prophets as we celebrate it on Philip and James Day, and Christ Jesus himself, the cornerstone, the church, the people of God from every nation and race, every time and place, we are the temple of God, the house of God. But for us, there is a particular house where we gather with one small flock, the people of God at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Here, we have heard the shepherd's voice. We have heard the voice that sought us out when we, like the one lost sheep, went wandering away from him. And so we begin the liturgy with that brief order of confession where we hear the shepherd's voice calling us back laying us gently on his shoulders. One of the beautiful aspects of this particular house of God is the stained glass windows. And there is a very large one between the organ chambers at the back of the church that we call the Sunday school window. There Jesus, with arms extended, says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. There is Jesus with the little children, hands raised in blessing, and there is Jesus cradling in his arms a lamb. I am Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. We are the lambs, and Jesus is the good shepherd, the good shepherd who would lay down his life for the sheep. Jesus, with his rod and his staff, is there to protect and defend us. I must admit that when I heard thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me as a child, it was hard for me to see the comfort in that. Spare the rod, spoil the child, was a saying that I heard much, thankfully experienced little growing up. But the idea of the rod and the staff didn't seem to be a thing of comfort, but it becomes that when you know against whom it is to be wielded. The shepherd's staff, that rod, was there, yes, to draw a straying sheep to himself, but more often to drive away the enemies that pursued them. The enemies that pursue us are not that annoying neighbor with whom we've been in a passive aggressive battle for as many years as we've lived in the apartment building. Our enemies is not that boss who's bound and determined to undercut our performance review at the end of the quarter. Our enemies are not those people who hold opposing political views to those of our own, which are obviously right and correct. Those aren't real enemies. Because at the end of the day, each and every one of us, red or blue, rich or poor, traditional or contemporary, each of us catches the same viruses, sheds the same colored blood. We are one flock, and we have one shepherd. And if we are one flock, then the enemy is the wolf. The enemy is that one who, like a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. The enemy is Satan. The enemy is the sin that lives within us. The enemy is death. And Jesus Christ fought, wielding the staff that is his cross, fought those enemies tooth and nail. And precisely when he seemed most to be defeated, rose in victory. It's almost as if the human nature of Jesus, the very fact that it was possible for him to suffer, was almost like a worm. Lo, I am a worm and no man. The cross, almost like a hook upon which a worm is placed, seeming to its injury and peril, tossed into the sea of humanity. Satan bit at that and thought he had devoured God's Son. 
But the cross was the hook that drew us out of the floodwaters that rise up around us and threaten us with death, with guilt, with pain and brokenness. Jesus Christ was lifted up out of the waters of death and rose in triumph and victory for us and so doing, defeated the very powers of Satan himself, left him powerless, flopping around on the beach of this world until the day at Jesus' coming when he as a bad fish is just tossed aside. Jesus Christ, as our good shepherd, has fought the fight for us. So we don't have to fight. We can simply be drawn in the net of his love, drawn up on shore to be brought into his household. As our good shepherd, Jesus, having found us, carries us in his arms to his home, to his house, where we will dwell forever. And as much as we love the building that houses the congregation that is St. Mark's, this isn't God's ultimate house. As much as we value our place in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, not even that is our ultimate home. I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. God has called us by the gospel enlightened us with his gifts. He sanctifies and keeps us in this faith, in this church, in this flock. So have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. To the one who is our good shepherd, who invites us to follow him through death to new and transformed living, be all glory with his Father and the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Living together in love and in hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In our intercessions today, we remember, of course, all those whose lives have been transformed because of the recent pandemic. In addition, we remember all those who mourn the death of Lucille, Lucille was the granddaughter of one we pray for often, Edward Gordon, and the sister, his sister, Michelle. Lucille passed away in North Carolina with complications from COVID-19. We also pray for our fellow church member, Louise Bodkin, who, having reached 100 years of age, fell asleep in Jesus this past week, and we pray for all who mourn. Let us then join our hearts and our voices in prayer to the Lord, our Father and Shepherd. For our parish community, that together we may live the gospel of the Good Shepherd in spirit of peace and concern for one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, for all pastors and teachers, that they may lead the church of God through Christ, the sheep gate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who govern and conduct the affairs of nations, that they may enact laws and public policies which uphold the sacred dignity of every person as a child of God. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who speak for the persecuted and who suffer with the oppressed, that Christ, who gives his life for his sheep, may be their power and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the recovering, and the dying, all those burdened under the pandemic that afflicts us, that by Christ's suffering they may be healed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn their deceased relatives and friends, especially Louise Bodkin and Lucille, that we may dwell with them forever in the house of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving to God for all those who have fallen asleep in the faith and now rest in the nearer presence of God, for St. Mary, the mother of our Lord, and St. Mark, our patron, St. Monica, Julian of Norwich, Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, Friedrich Winneken, C.F.W. Walther, and our own Marilyn Burns and Emily Shields. O Lord, your Spirit called them through the gospel and brought them into your house in the kingdom of heaven. May their witness direct us and their fellowship support us on our journey home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father of love, Lord of life, hear our Easter prayers. Give us the vision of faith and the courage of hope to embrace the life of the risen Christ and have it to the full. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that, by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look on us with his favor and give us peace. Amen. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, for our use your folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear us, children, when we pray. You have promised to receive us 
Poor and sinful though we be, you have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still.